Hello, folks. Welcome to the Manly Pinterest Tip Show. I'm Jeff C., and you're not. I've got a great, exciting show for you guys today. I've got some of my good friends and incredible marketers here to talk about the five ways to use visual marketing to boost your business. You know, I'd always li I'd like for you guys to go over to mainlypinteresttips.com and sign up to be a part of our email community where you can n always find out about great shows like we're having today um, with our email newsletter. You can also now text Manly Pinterest Tips to 33444 on your mobile device. That's Manly Pinterest Tips to 33444 on your mobile device. I want to introduce my guests for today. These guys are awesome. First of all, we have my friend, Miss. Elisa Meredith. Elisa, how are you doing today? Hey, Jeff. I'm doing great. How about yourself? Doing well, doing well. So, You're and also looking dapper. Looking dapper. Thank you very much. I, I try my best when you're going to be on the show. <laughs> and also, we have my great friend and uh, Pinterest co co colleague Vincent. I mean, hey, Vincent. <laughs> how are you doing today? Good, good. I'm, I'm glad that the uh, that that was a proper introduction. <laughs> so it worked out well. <laughs> good, good. So we're going to be talking about today. This is a special kind of edition we're doing. We actually were going to do this as a webinar, and I said, you know what? Let's let's do this for my audience here on Google Plus and uh, the podcast because this is some great information. You guys always ask great questions, and so as we're going along, if you would ask your questions in the comments, we will get to those at the end of the presentation because we actually have visuals for today, and so uh, we're going to be showing those as we go through the uh, the webinar slash hangout and so ask those questions and we'll get to them at the end of the show today so without further ado let me share my screen and we will get started with the presentation and so you guys let me know if you can't see this for any reason but here we go with the presentation of five ways to use visual marketing to boost your business Vincent take it away buddy yeah, you betcha. So like Jeff was saying, we're going to be talking about five ways to use visual marketing to boost your business. Uh, so we're just kind of waiting for um, the next slide, which is, ah, you know, waiting's always good. Uh, so here we go. Here's the lovely faces. We've got the amazing Elisa Meredith, Jesse, uh, and myself. Uh, you know, we're happy to answer any questions that you have at the end of the show, of course. Um, but uh, Lisa, you want to tell a little bit about yourself because, you know, you're, you're an awesome person, right? So, so introduce yourself. <laughs> Well, I wasn't going to lead with that, <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm a blogger and inbound marketer and a Pinterest fanatic um, um, partner at Scalable Social Media, and I just relaunched my personal blog, elisameredith.com, where I talk all about the issues that we're, we're speaking about today, about visuals and social media and how to generate leads with them. Plus, I also have a giant poodle coming in and out, so I'm going to try to keep that ruckus down. <laughs> Sounds good. And uh, I'm going to challenge Jeff because Jeff is always an interesting character. So, Jeff, what's uh, one thing uh, that your audience doesn't know about you that uh, that you can share? Ooh. Oh, I think it's in my profile. But the one of the coolest things I ever got to do was I was actually able to fly the NASA space shuttle simulator, and it was the fixed bay, and we couldn't get in the motion bay when we were at NASA because uh, John Glenn was actually training in it. So that's a oh. thing that. Many people don't know, so it was a lot of fun. So that's cool. Did you get a? Were you able to get a selfie with John Glenn by any chance? I didn't. I don't think. Did I have a cell phone then? It was way. It was a while back. Yeah. Oh. Uh, no. No selfies with John Glenn. Sorry. Right. Sounds good. Uh, and so myself, I, I love Pinterest, uh, and uh, you know it's kind of my network of choice. I've, I'm recently married, and I love it. I love my wife to death. Uh, so and also this is interesting. So recently, I actually became another uncle because my niece was. Uh, born Alicia, so if Alicia is watching this, hi. Um, which she probably doesn't understand. She's just literally like she has like the cutest hiccups. Like, right. um, so so all the babies aside and all all the John Glenn selfies aside, uh, let's move on and let's talk about the future of visual marketing. Um, so this is a quote from Daniel Newman. He's a contributor at Forbes, Forbes, and is the author of the Millennial CEO. And he says all fingers are pointing in one direction. Visual content is growing bigger and that's where the future of content marketing is headed. It's inevitable. The future is already here. So we, we need to think about our visual marketing and visual content now. So the question of course is how big is visual content? Is it a small segment? Is it a big segment? segment? Let's talk about how big the visual social media revolution actually is. 
So here's something that a lot of you may know or may not, uh, but again, Instagram, that wonderful mobile app that people love to take beautiful pictures with, uh, that that app has 300 million monthly active users. It's, it's a huge amount. Uh, of course, it's not the only one. There, there's other networks like Pinterest, uh, and Pinterest is huge as well. Uh, so you can see, based on the slide right there, 72.8 monthly active users on Pinterest. Uh, it's this beautiful visual network, lots of people using it to, to explore what they want to buy, uh, they want to get inspired, what kind of recipes to make. Uh, so we're hoping to be able to teach you some visuals that will you can use, not just on Pinterest, but on a variety of different uh, visual networks. And of course, there's another network that I think a lot of people don't really talk about. It's kind of quiet, and that's SlideShare. Uh, this may surprise you, but 60 million unique monthly visitors go to SlideShare looking for presentations. Now, we're talking a lot about still visuals, but the truth is video is big. And so when Facebook released uh, released Facebook videos, if they found that 50% of Americans who use Facebook daily watch at least one video. So video itself is a massive draw when it comes to visual content marketing. So, so Jeff, actually we've got five ways to use visual marketing to boost your business. Do you want to talk a little bit about what we're going to be, what's yeah, going to be yeah, happening right, with this right. webinar? I had my mic muted because it's starting to rain here. I didn't want to get everybody drowned out by my my, uh, my metal roof building. But anyway, um, first we're going to talk about you know it's how important it is to create a great image for your blog post. Uh, you know we spend all this time uh, writing our blog post. It's very very important not to skimp on the visuals. The second thing we're talking about we're going to talk about creating social images that engage. I'll be taking that section. Uh, Vince is going to do a great job on using SlideShare for lead generation. He just mentioned how big of a, uh, a, a an opportunity there is on SlideShare, which is one area that I really need to uh, kind of boost, and I'm, so I'm looking forward to what he has to say there. And the other thing is, uh, Lisa's going to take talking about creating effective landing pages and how to use visuals for that. And finally, I'm going to wrap it up with uh, talking about how to use visual to make personal and video to make personal and professional connections. So that's what we're going to talk about today. All right, so like Jeff said, the first one is every blog post deserves an image. Um, really, your your blog is going to be the foundation of your marketing. It's going to be where your leads come in most of the time. So like you said, we put so much work into creating this wonderful piece of content uh, that sometimes we forget about the image, or it's kind of an afterthought. So we really need to look at it backwards. <laughs> Think about while you're writing what would be the best visual representation of this content because you can see real clearly which one would you which one would you stick around for. Um, now Google cares about whether you stick around or not. They know and they reward a website that is clearly a good user experience. So your users want it, that means Google wants it. So give it to them with a great image. And also People like to share a blog post when it has a beautiful image in it. You can see this one's been shared several times. Um, and, and something that people might be wondering, I know Jeff's going to get into this later on about different social image sizes, but uh, this image here, it, it's not real great for Pinterest. So, so what do you do? Do you have to have many images in your blog post? Well, you could do that, or you could use Social Warfare, which is a plugin for WordPress that I use and Jeff uses. Um, which allows you to specify different image sizes for shares on your blog, and it absolutely increases the shares, I can tell you that already. So when you use an image in your social updates, it's going to increase your clicks, which is really important when you're, when you're sharing blog posts or when other people are sharing your blog posts, that it has a beautiful image in it that is going to entice someone to click. So make sure you have that. So when people are sharing your images it's going to, or sharing your blog posts, it's going to have the best chance of creating that extra traffic, and then hopefully those will turn into leads as well. Uh, and like I said, leads, that's, the, that's what we really want, right? So if, this is actually a, a print screen from the HubSpot portal of a client of mine. This is just month to date, and you can see that his organic and direct traffic is good, but the social media traffic is amazing. Um, and even more important to me here um, will be the conversion rate between the visits and the contacts. So 
the, the social media conversion rate is tremendously higher than organic search. So don't don't feel like it's all about SEO, it's all about Google. Uh, you can get a ton of traffic and really great leads from social, especially from Pinterest. All right, this is my section here, and hopefully, you guys, it just opened up with uh, water above me, and so <laughs> hopefully it's, you'll be able to hear me over my metal roof building. Uh, let me know if I need to speak up. I'm trying to get as close to the mic as I can. But um, yeah, yeah. Good. One of the one of the things is, you know, we mentioned this before. Is I see I, I see a, even a lot of the big marketing companies do this. Is they have a really great article, really great content, but their visuals aren't aren't there at all. And so if you're going to take the time to create a a, a great article and you're wanting to be noticed for your your presentation, that you really sit there and think about how I can use a visual to continue to tell that message you know every, everybody says that they're scanning more now they're not reading as much you know a great visual can really draw somebody in to see to to read your content and here's an example of um, of what I have I think that of some examples of, of video uh, images that really draw the UN by telling a story you have one by Rebecca one by Rebecca Radice there that you know 11 ways to repurpose your blog content into new media. I mean, that image just draws you in. Even though it's an illustration, it's not, a, not an actual photograph. I mean, just the way she's doing that, it just really shows that um, you, you want to read what she has to say. Uh, the middle one is one I did. Uh, I get a lot of comments about that. There's my, we, when I interviewed my friend Dustin Stout, who's in the audience right now, um, that image just gets a lot of uh, clicks on it because people want to find out about how to create pinnable images. And that image just seems to draw them in to learn more about that story. And then uh, my friend Mad Lemmings, Ashley Fox, um, multiply your email subscribers like rabbits with one simple trick. He always uses great, um, interesting images. Sometimes they're even scary. He had one with a clown that was kind of a scary one time. But they they draw you in. They make you want to know what that article is about. And so um, think really strategically when you're picking your images out. And we'll talk about this later. Um, we, that right now, and, and Vincent and I were talking about this in the green room, there's so many opportunities now for free images. You don't have to spend five, ten, twenty dollars an image anymore uh, when you're looking for an image for your blog post. But you want to be careful that you don't look like everyone else. So think of creative ways where you can either add a filter, you can crop it a different way, uh, you can add text in an interesting way just like uh, Ashley did on the, the Mad Lemmings image there on how to make that stand out from everybody else. Even if it's the same image, think creatively outside of the box on how you can make that look a little bit different. Next, um, I want to talk about repurposing, repurposing, repurposing because uh, all businesses now, we if you're a small business, you are crunched for time. And everyone's telling you you need to do something else. One more thing you have to do. Um, this is how many images now I create for every blog post. This is an interview I did with Ian Anderson Gray that did really well. I create the one on the left is a Pinterest image. The one in the top middle is a social media image that I, I create. And the one on the bottom is a Twitter image image that goes out with the tweet about the show and then the far right is the one I create for Instagram and you can see with these examples what I do is I creatively crop um, I'm able to move the title and the, um, the the text around so I can crop in different ways so I can share across different social media platforms and this has been huge for me I also use the social warfare plugin and uh, it's incredible for sharing these images out I can tell what images need to go where uh, when people click on those social sharing buttons and so um, it just has saved uh, it has boosted my in engagement as well so um, doing it this way and setting it up correctly when you are doing your workflow I know this seems like a lot of work to do at once but really it only takes me about 30 minutes to put all these images together I actually spend more time trying to find an interesting background to use with my image so uh, put this into your workflow and then it just is part of every blog post now and so Think strategically on how you can repurpose stuff across social networks because it does make a huge difference of getting eyeballs on your content. Uh, I want to give you guys a quick little Canva power tip. I use Photoshop and Canva uh, quite a bit. Uh, one of the things you can do is when, like, when you're setting up your um, your images and you're trying to make a distinctive look, like we talked about earlier, is if you click on the image and then you click on filter and then click on advanced options you'll see the arrows there on the left 
uh, a window will uh, pop, uh, pop up and there will be a, like a little hash, uh, hex code for that filter. Well, that filter you can copy and paste to other images. So what I like to do, if I find something that works really well for an image or a brand or a client that I'm, that I'm using and I want to use it multiple times and I want to have it a distinct look, I'll copy that to Evernote or to Notepad and then I can paste that filter on to any of those images that I want to have look like that later. So it's a really quick power tip um, to, try to kind of brand your images. The other thing is, and we talked about this earlier about trying not to look like everybody else, and a lot of times now, because Canva is getting so popular, you'll see that there's so many images, and you go, oh, that's a Canva, that's a Canva image. Well, what you can do, if you see there, at the, it's really s small, like un underneath the number one, there's a little uh, page button. If you click on that, you can create multiple pages inside of the Canva document. And what I like to do is drag different of their, their template layouts to that to that desktop and then I can swap different image treatments between them and so my image will look different between uh, somebody else who just did kind of the generic default image inside of Canva. So that's kind of some quick power tips uh, that you can use to um, kind of uh, make your images kind of go the extra mile. Thanks, Jeff. That's, uh, I think that Jeff covers a lot of good topics, which is about creating different visuals, visuals that really stun. And SlideShare, you know, we kind of think of it as a, a presentation social network, but really it is the marketer's secret weapon. It's this network that people keep talking about, but it's a network where people go to get professional information. They, they look for information, how-tos, listicles, all that kind of jazz. So I want to kind of cover two important aspects of SlideShare that you need to know about. Number one, when you're creating a amazing slide share, uh, the very first slide that you have, like anything else, needs to be stunning. It needs to have an amazing headline. So we talk a lot about visuals, but visuals can be, be good, but when it comes to slide share, having a great visual along with a great headline will draw in somebody right away. Just imagine it almost like reading the newspaper. If you see the front page of the newspaper, what kind of headline is going to grab you? What's going to grip you? Uh, what's going to be helpful to your audience? So here's one that says how to create slides that rock. Uh, and if you notice, what's really interesting about this particular slide share uh, for the first slide is that, again, it, you're not necessarily trying to be a, a graphical genius. Um, all you need is a, sometimes a, is a clean font. Um, it, some good color contrast, uh, and that will help you stand out right away. Uh, and that, that's one of the aspects. But something that can, you can do that will help you generate more leads with SlideShare uh, is that you can actually make links clickable. And that's something that's really amazing. So here's an example uh, for, for the IMHRO, and this is really about health and donating to them uh, to fight depression. And so this was created with the mind that, hey, you know what, we are going to create this slide share, but we don't want people just to be aware of what's going on with depression. We want people to help the cause. And so what this person's done is that they have a clear, uh, you know, uh, action, which is help the cause. Uh, you'll see that a little click on the very bottom right corner. And so anytime that you do a slide share presentation, anytime, you want to make sure that you're putting in either a clickable link through an image uh, or whether it's just a written text and have that go back to a landing page where people can sign up for email. Uh, or again, maybe it's just a page that you want people to contact you about further services. But whatever you do from now on, when you create a slide share presentation, presentation, always have a clickable link um, within your presentation, uh, and as my good friend Elisa Meredith had pointed out, which is you can create these clickable links after the third slide uh, when you when it, within your SlideShare presentation. So, so you can't put it in right away um, on the first slide. You got to wait till at least the third slide to be able to do it. Uh, but those are two actionable steps that I really encourage you encourage you to use when it comes to SlideShare. Vincent, I want to ask a really quick question, if that's okay. Yeah, now, of course. Some people who may not be familiar with SlideShare. Now, SlideShare is, uh, you can upload your PowerPoint slides, correct? Yes, uh, that's correct. SlideShare. And you can also embed these SlideShares into your, let's say, blog posts or a web page, just like you would like a YouTube video, correct? 
Yeah, and I mean you can you can embed it into a YouTube video. Uh, I mean LinkedIn loves SlideShare because they own it. Uh, and like you're saying, the great thing is once you have some kind of uh, let's say like a blog post, like a listicle, you can make that into a SlideShare presentation. Uh, you can share it on Twitter. Um, like you're saying, Jeff, and I know Lisa talks about this a lot as well, is let's repurpose that content. Use it again and again. Uh, don't be afraid to share it uh, because the truth is you never know who's watching uh, and that's kind of the beauty of SlideShare. Remember, I told you there's 60 million unique visitors a month that go to SlideShare. If you break that down onto a daily basis, that's 2 million people. So that's a huge amount if you think about it. Right, and a cool thing too is you can also, just like with YouTube videos in Pinterest, you can embed uh, SlideShare presentations inside of a Pinterest pin and you can play them inside of Pinterest and not have to leave the platform as well. So that's I think is really cool also. Cool. And then of course our favorite Canva um, has presentation templates now, so you don't have to start with that blank page for your SlideShare anymore, which I appreciate. <laughs> exactly. And then uh, this one, increase leads uh, with effective use of visuals and CTAs and landing pages. Um, this is one of my favorite topics, landing pages. Um, I have an example here from Unbounce, and they, of course, know landing pages. And some of the really effective things that they did that, that we all need to do on our landing pages is consider how to effectively illustrate your offering. So here they are selling, uh, well, not selling, they're giving away, really, a free course to learn how to create these beautiful landing pages. So they provided some print screens below so that you can get an idea visually of what you're going to get when you sign up. Um, they've also used contrasting colors with that blue background and the orange call to action button, which is that color combination for some reason, and we know that they've been testing it, is one that I've seen on, on more than one site. So it, it might work for you too, but as long as it, as it contrasts with the rest of the colors on your page, it will catch the eye. And then I like too how they're aware that your eye is going to be drawn to those print screens. They put that little carrot, that little arrowhead to point back up to the call to action to kind of encourage you to take that next step, which is what they want. And the other thing that's really important um, is that your call to action buttons and your landing pages relate to each other visually. So on the left we have a call to action button that was in a blog post and then it's branded beautifully there with their colors and then it leads to that landing page on the right and it, it's very obvious that the style is similar um, so you feel like okay I've come to the right place I haven't been tricked into something else and obviously the style matches we just don't want to have that disconnect I gave the example like if the call to action on the left was a cartoon puppy and then you got to the page on the right which is kind of super modern and fun, you feel like, excuse me, <laughs> there's a little activity going on behind me. Um, you might feel like that disconnect and then you start to lose trust and then they're not going to want to give you their contact information. So just make sure it's consistent and makes sense. Very cool. So there wasn't just a cartoon puppy, there was actually a real puppy Inside he, oh, he was illustrating the point for me, that cartoon. <laughs> there he goes again. Awesome, awesome. All right, this is my section. We're going to talk about using video to make connections. And first of all, guys, just one thing. I would not be where I am today if I did not um, use video. I mean, I started uh, doing these shows at, on Google Hangouts for a long time, um, got some traction with them. Um, people got to know me. I mean, it's just a huge, huge bonus when you use video. And um, I, I've just been, uh, I think there's so many, so many businesses are so scared to use video because they do not want to get in front of the camera and, and, and not look perfect to their audience. And we're going to talk about that a little bit later. Um, there's all sorts of video you can do. I, you know, I, I do a lot of interview shows, like the one on the left where I got to interview uh, Guy Kawasaki and Pegs Fitzpatrick. Um, that those kind of shows do very, very well. Little short videos. Um, there's one where I, my non-bearded, where my beard was just starting, my baby beard. Um, when I was doing a, kind of an Iron Man little promo for one of my shows. So long form content, short form content, they all work and they all have their place. 
Um, once again, repurposing, repurposing, repurposing. Uh, if you saw that video, that was on the front of this this presentation. If you went to the Google Plus landing page and looked at that, my little uh, I call it my lower voice warning video. Um, I use that video in multiple places. I use it. It's actually pinned. If you go to my pin, my Twitter uh, profile, that's actually pinned to the top of my um, Twitter. Um, I have got a 15 second one of that that I edited down that goes on Instagram. So think just like when you're doing images how you can repurpose that video. If you're going to take the time and maybe even the expense to use video for your presentation or for, for um, your marketing purposes, think of all the different ways you can slice up that video. Um, and rerun it and do it and schedule it out on uh, Twitter on different months. Um, you know, you've got you've got Twitter now that has 30 seconds you can use a video. You've got Instagram that has 15 section seconds. Uh, Vine is eight, um, and you can do these little trailers now for um, your your Google Hangouts. There's so many different places you can use video that uh, just make sh just think strategically how you can slice it up. It doesn't have to be perfect, especially on Instagram. You can do those rough cuts, and you don't have to have like a transition or anything. But if you make sense with your transitions on Instagram, people love video over there, and you can really build your audience quickly. Um, uh, multiple places to engage customers if you're a business. Periscope is the n and, and Meerkat are the big new ones on the, on the market. I actually did a little Periscope intro for this show today. Um, it's not polished. It, it, for me, from a video editing background, it drives the, it bugs the snot out of me because I can't take another, te another take or, or look off a cue card. It's just me talking, and it's, it's hard, uh, but it's something I have to force myself to do. But it is effective because people like to see behind the scenes. They like that raw uh, style. On, 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 I know a lot of people use that. Google Hangouts, um, that is just such still an untapped place for businesses to connect with their audience. Um, you don't have to make a huge uh, show of it. You could just interview some of your best best customers and ask them what they like about this your service I mean and then have a short little video that you could repurpose for Instagram and on your YouTube channel and embed on your blog post I mean think of all the different ways and all the different um, traction you can get with repurposing video Meerkat is a little different from Periscope Periscope lasts 24 hours um, and then Meerkat's kinda done when it's when it's over there are some third-party tools that let you upload that stuff to YouTube um, webinars just like we're doing here kind of a uh, Google Plus Hangout webinar hybrid. Um, those are huge for getting uh, people to understand your service and, and get to know you and see your face. Um, uh, Facebook video ads. I want to talk to that a little bit. I know a lot of people on Google Plus don't like Facebook, and but there are so many eyeballs on Facebook, and the video now is there's even a little bit of rivalry going on with YouTube. Um, video ads right now are really really cheap. If you have a video that you can use on on Facebook and you can upload it uh, and upload it natively to Facebook that means you upload it inside of Facebook's instead of like copying a link to YouTube and pasting it in your feed that way if you uploaded it natively you can run what are called video view ads which are really cheap and can get your uh, face and your message in front of a lot of people uh, on Facebook and you can really target those people I can target if I was doing an ad for a realtor I could target uh, people with 50 miles uh, around or 25 miles or whatever or a zip code and if they're interested in moving, I can drill down that far on Facebook video ads, and and they're very very cheap right now. I don't know how long that'll happen, but if you're interested in doing video, uh, look look at Facebook. So there's a there's a ton of ways you can use video to engage with your customers online. Uh, and one of the things I kind of talked about before, and this quote made a ton of difference to me when I first got started because I was kind of in vapor lock. I didn't know what to do. I wanted everything to be perfect. But this quote by John Acuff really kind of changed my life. And it's 90% perfect and shared with the world. Always changing more changes more lives than 100% perfect and stuck in your head. To me, that's huge. So even if you're uncomfortable, even if and you're going to be uncomfortable, even if you are are scared to get in front of the cam the camera, try it. Um, I know Elisa is now doing Meerkat and Periscoping before her podcast, which seems kind of strange, but it, it works for her because people <laughs> want to see behind the scenes. And I'm sure that was a, wasn't that hard at first to get over getting in front of the camera, Elisa? You know, there's something funny about Periscope and Meerkat where you just push that button that somehow allows me to forget that I'm on video. 
um, hang out on air is a little more intimidating and actually trying to do a, a video that you're really going to edit for perfection, it's terrifying to me. But for some reason, this super easy live push a button is, is just, to me, so simple. And I, I love the way people will talk to you and they will add to the conversation. So yeah, we've been doing our podcast um, and leaving Periscope on the whole time and it's uh, been fun. Well, see, and that's that, that. That's right to my point. Different types of video and different types of visual marketing is going to be different for different people. I mean, you don't like doing the the uh, um, edited stuff. I would rather do the edited with more takes and read off a cue card. Uh, it's just the way we're built, and you know, it's the same way with other visual marketing. Some people will, you know, really can really do visuals well. Um, and take great pictures. I can't take great pictures. And then people go, Jeff, you t you have awesome photos. You're a great photographer. I'm like, no, I'm a great stock photographer. I can pick, you know, you can pick great images out of stock <laughs> photography. And so, play to your strengths. Try, you know, do what feels natural to you. And if it, and if you're finding success, do more of it, and then outsource the rest. Um, that's just kind of some advice. But but really, try. Don't keep stuff stuck in your head. Um, get it just to, I can get this out, I know I've got to let it go, but don't keep it in your head and wait for it to be per perfect because it's not going to happen. Yeah. I, I love the way that you do video, Jeff. Um, it makes me want to do more. and It's kind of intimidating for some of us who aren't real technically inclined. So, I mean, where would, where would you start if you were somebody like me? Well, I wish I would have had the uh, tools that they have now with just your phone when I first started doing video. I mean, there was a big learning curve when you first started. Um, you having to get a non-linear editing system and getting an expensive camera. Now you can shoot entire movies on your iPhone. And so there's really no excuse equipment-wise for not doing video uh, other than you're just scared of it because anybody, <laughs> anybody, anybody can do it, really. And there's, you know, you think about... Um, all the, uh, the like Brian uh, Fanzo, who is just killing it on Meerkat and Periscope, and he's just being real in front of the camera, and people love it, and he's built a huge audience and huge platform by doing it that way, and his isn't edited and polished at all, and he's just being real in real life and, and building an audience that way, so anybody can do video. And I think that's a good point too. I think sometimes, you know, uh, the, the truth is not everybody has a huge budget or a huge team, and a lot of times you got to do things yourself. Uh, and I think that's a common problem uh, and challenge that we all have. How how do we create better visuals? Uh, how do we take advantage of the social media revolution that's taking place that that's using visual content? Uh, and so Jeff, uh, myself, and Elisa and I are really happy to be able to present. Uh, really, I think the first of its kind in the world that I know of uh, is the Visual Social Media Conference. Uh, and this conference is going to be able to teach you about how to, how to leverage and use Instagram. Uh, Jen Herman uh, is, is jumping aboard on that. Uh, we're going to be able to teach you how to use Pinterest, uh, you know, how to uh, be able to use SlideShare better to, to grow your business as well. Uh, we've got amazing speakers for the conference like Peg Fitzpatrick and Rebecca Radice, uh, who's always smiling and is always wonderful, that's going to be teaching about visual branding. So maybe you feel like, hey, you know, I need to kind of up my visual social media game. I need to know how to create more visual content. I think this is the conference for you uh, just because it's going to save you time. It's going to save you headaches. You're going to be learning from the best of the best in the world, uh, and I think that's really important. Um, is there anything that you'd like to add, Elisa or Jeff, anything you think I'm missing? No, I'm just really excited because we have some great speakers, and it's uh, a great um, thing. And, and I know people say, well, you know, I've seen a lot of these speakers maybe speak for free, uh, and this isn't going to be a paid conference, but we are paying our speakers. And so we're not, we're not just asking them to come give their general um, talk that they're, 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 you've seen them do hangouts over and over and over. We're actually asking them to come and present great content for people who are paying for the seminar and we're paying for their trouble. So um, it's going to be different than what you've seen before and uh, I, I just think it's, it's, it's very, very uh, affordable and just some, I, was, I, I love all these speakers that we have and they've helped me so much in even branding and, and growing my visual marketing. 
And I agree. And I think that's the, that's the key thing is that you're mentioning it's helped you grow your brand. Uh, it's helped you elevate your game. And I think that's really important uh, to keep in mind. Uh, and with the Visual Social Media Conference, we're offering a really special introductory price. It's going to be the lowest price that you're going to ever get uh, because it's just going to keep increasing after that um, up to the final amount. Um, so right now, you can get it for a limited time offer of $97. Uh, so if you go to our website, you visit visualsocialmediaconference.com and you register, uh, you're going to get the guaranteed pricing. Uh, the conference does take place on October 14th and 15th. As we said, we have an amazing line of speakers uh, that you can see on the website. Uh, and, you know, we're hoping that we're going to see you there. Uh, and we'd love to hear, uh, you know, your thoughts about the Visual Social Media Conference uh, as well. So we hope to see you all there. Yeah, great. I'm going to go ahead and stop the uh, presentation. Uh, I mean, stop the uh the screen share right now, Vincent, um, because uh, you know some of those people we're going to have on there I j are incredible, and there also is going to be a replay. So it's not like if you can't show up live or you can only show up for part of it, you miss out. We're going to have that as a replay offered to other people as well. So I want to kind of get uh, going on um, some of the questions we had during the show. Um, one of the things I wanted to bring up, because Eileen, Eileen's such a sweet person. Thanks so much, Eileen, for showing up today. Uh, she said, I use the catch hashtag to save my meerkat on YouTube. It's pretty cool. So that's a great, great piece of advice from Eileen. Um, if you haven't followed Eileen, basic blog, uh, her, her blogging site is incredible. Uh, make sure you circle and go check her out. Uh, Carmen says, hey, great. Go ahead. What were you going to say? Oh, I was just going to add to that that you can, when your Meerkat or Periscope is done, you can save it to your phone and then you can upload it to YouTube, which is what I've been doing with some of mine too. Catch is awesome too. Yeah. And here's one from Dustin Stout. Hey, Dustin, thanks for stopping by today. He goes, Jeff, see, curious why you separate the social media image and Twitter image. Uh, does your social media image not automatically crop effectively on Twitter? Um, most of the time, Dustin, it does, but. I want to make sure every time that I have an exquisite image and none of my text is going to be uh, cropped off. And I and, and if you put an image with your tweet, when you're tweeting like a blog post or something, it gets tons more engagement than anything else. And in fact, I use it, one of my favorite tools also is Triber. Um, I'm a mem I have a tribe there where I post all my articles and I always make sure my image comes through because it does make a huge difference uh, on getting shared. So... Uh, anything else you guys want to add to that? Let's see here. Oh, good. No one heard the rain. Um, social warfare. Yes, that's the Dustin mentioned that because he's a co-founder of, of social warfare, which is for me um, being able to tell what pins I want people to pin uh, on my blog is huge, and that I think is I know is exclusive to social warfare, and I really really uh, love that. Um, you know what I've been doing with, with social warfare too is uh, after I pin my image, I go back and I add a pin it later to the default social description. Oh, very so cool. anyone, yeah, it's such a great plugin. Yeah. Oh, and Mike Alton says Alyssa, Meredith, and Vincent Ng are amazing, and of course Jeff C is average. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate it. Oh, fans. <laughs> yeah, love it. Yeah. Um, but. Um, Mike also says, yeah, make sure to make sure to upload those videos direct to Facebook. Yeah, uh, you get so much more play when you upload those videos to Facebook. I actually now, if I shoot a video, I shoot two uh, image, two call to actions at the end. You know, one I do for, um, you know, I point and say, hey, subscribe to my channel where there's a button for the YouTube. But I have a separate ending that I have for uh, Facebook because Facebook now allows you when you upload a video to have a call to action on the end of the video. It's a little optional thing when you do like an upload the video or a video view ad where you can put in, you know, visit my website and they can click on that during at the end on desktop, I believe, and it's there the entire time for mobile, I believe. So anyway. Um any, anything else? Um you guys want to add before we wrap up the show? I, thanks again for my audience showing up. You guys are awesome. Um, make sure to check out Visual Social Media Conference at visualsocialmediaconference.com. Get the early bird pricing. Uh, we got some great, great... I'm really excited. I, I'd pay for this conference. I really would. Because there's so many good speakers and I love every one of them. So uh, make sure you guys uh, head over there. Now, before we leave, you guys, I want to give you a shout out for bringing some awesome content. So... Alisa, where can we find you on the interwebs? On the interwebs, alisameredith.com, and then that will link you to all my social profiles. I'd love to see you. I, I'm a big 
big lover of the Twitter. Oh, we had a question real quick. Uh, Sandra asked, what's, what, where's the conference being held? What state? It's a virtual conference, Sandra. You can watch it live anytime. There'll, there's going to be downloads. You can download and, and uh, watch it later if you can't attend the session live. But there'll be a question and answer like we're doing right now where you can ask questions of the um, people speaking, and there's going to be interactivity that way. So it is a virtual conference. And Vincent, where can we find you, my friend? You're muted. I can't hear you. So... <laughs> oh, there actually, you, you know what? Just so you know, that's how good of a mime I am, actually. That's, that's right, how good I am. You're great. Uh, yeah, so so now my miming career is over. Uh, it's uh, www.mcngmarketing.com. You can find me there. I'm uh, looking forward to hearing from some of you, if not none of you. <laughs> <laughs> right. And as always, I'd love for you guys to visit manlypinterestips.com, click on the sidebar, and subscribe to our email community so you'll never miss miss great shows like we had here today because at Manly Pinterest Tips we're continuing to add testosterone one pin at a time. See you next time everybody. Thanks for coming. <laughs>